Happy 4th of July. It would be happier if we didn't have some of the storm or drum that we're suffering through, but that's the way it is. That's life. I'm doing a stand and talk because the weather is, uh, the temperature and the humidity are, uh, I don't know if they're life threatening, but it's pretty difficult. Uh, I might go out much later when it's dark and cooler. The um, issue before us on this day of independence is can we maintain our independence as was originally intended when we resisted George III and in a Declaration of Independence penned by Tom Jefferson, he indicated what were the offense, offenses by the crown against the people, the colonies in America. Those points remain valid to this day. The Constitution that was written after that uh, was weak in this sense. It was done in secret. But when it became public, people like Patrick Henry and others forced there to be the inclusion of a Bill of Rights, things that protected us. From the beginning until recently, I'd say the, the time of Trump, uh, a criminal found in politics with an earlier life that was a pretty shoddy life as a failed casino operator and a questionable landlord and builder in New York. He's one of these men who takes for himself and has an evidence except where he saw an angle in it for some transaction to be good or to treat someone else. There's a historic list of things that he's done wrong. And we're faced today in the shadow of the Supreme Court with the notion that he has immunity for whatever bad act he does as he calls it an official act. We can't even inquire into what it is. We have to resist that instead of describe how and it will be applied. It should never be applied. It should be resisted at every turn. It should be fought just as we once fought, our forebears fought, our founding fathers fought, and many people between them and fairly recent to make this a democracy and to ever work to perfect it. As a kid in New York, I was uh, attending Fordham Prep and I was very much taken with science. But I was also finding myself interested in politics. And I went to the high school because they got to use the university pool. And I wanted to be Johnny Weissmuller. <laughs> Anyhow, one day I was going to an afternoon class uh, after our break. And I saw all the university students going into the gymnasium. And I shouldered my way past them. And as I did that, sort of like a B-movie, as I came in, there was a Klieg light coming from one end of the room to the other. And it lit up on the stage, a man standing there speaking to first-generation Irish, Italian, uh, a whole bunch of people whose parents and the people they knew hadn't gone past high school. And that included myself, not my parents, nor even my younger brother. And uh, so I walked in there, and who was that young man? That young man in about September of 1960 was a senator from Massachusetts, JFK, John Kennedy. And he spoke to the audience about the challenge to make a difference and that they had both a privilege and they had a, a duty to do that. And this echoes down the years of my life to today. And when I left this to go back, I think, to a Latin class, I didn't get in any trouble, but I was in kind of a reverie the rest of the day. I don't remember very much else. So I was like a freshman in high school. Before I graduated from the school, JFK had been assassinated. The hero that he became for me was a combination of his belief in the individual and the individual to be equal with others and to have a right to be let alone to be who one was. Independence. An independence of the individual like the independence of our colonies forming a nation from George III, a monarch. So today we look at the long history going back and in the rearview mirror that is any such look, we see how we stumbled how it cost us lives, blood, and treasure to build this nation so that on a 4th of July, as John Adams once contemplated, we would celebrate what they had done in Philadelphia. And so we do. And we resolve to make a difference going forward. 
and that difference is to resist and to fight at every turn in every way we can. The effort to take over our country and make it a dictatorship under the most ill-bred, rotten, evil person in history that comes before us. If we were to write a book, it would be found implausible by an editor up in lower New York, because how could anybody be as craven as Trump is? Secondly, how could so many people subscribe to him as our nation failed to inform its people of the purpose that favors them, does not disfavor them? We have heard for years how Republicans don't want to recall us the, the Democratic Party. We're the Democrat Party. Interesting. The language that they would change is exactly what dictators do, to try to remove nuance, meaning, from the language, from discourse, to favor them taking over the government. That's what we have today. We keep redef redefining things, and the biggest change has been one of our three branches of government, the Supreme Court, six of the nine, telling us that our president is immune. He can do anything. He could shoot people at Times Square, as he once joked. Not that it's possible, but that he could do it and that nobody could do anything about it. Are you going to trust your freedom with such a man? No. We have to be independent of this kind of a government. But right now, we have people that are fighting over things that make no sense. For example, if Biden is healthy and can fight and does fight, he's our nominee, end of story. If something happens, then we'll deal with it. Meantime, the choice is between a person who's a convicted felon and a president who's made a difference for us already, has done this his entire life. If you don't have clarity in your position, as to what to do in this country to save it from those who favor autocracy, autocracy and dictatorship, then we truly are lost. If you don't register and vote, if you think you can make a protest vote and it has no effect, well, that's just people ill-conceived who want to encourage you to scatter the vote because it's probably going to be close. It was before. In Virginia, a couple of years ago, we had an election, and some wondered how the Democratic Party would do. And I said I thought we would do well. But the reason I thought we would do well is because I thought the Democrats, Independents, and Republicans, when they saw how foul was the kind of campaigning of the Republicans, that they would recoil. And if the Democrats were truth were, were, were followers of the truth and what could be done and could, what could be rightly done that we would win. And that is what happened. There's no schema. It was really a reaction. It was really a question of the voters. What do they think of the Republicans en masse? And now the question is, what do we think of a man who has been found in different context to be wanting, which is the kindest way I can put it, forgive the pause, but it's very hard to talk of Trump and not to talk of the foulest kind of human being that I think I've known during my lifetime. And he is comparable, as I read it, as a student of history, to those who went before, who advocated the kinds of things that Trump has embraced. So, I hope today you had a chance to relax with your family and friends and to have some fun and have a good picnic. Holly and I are doing that. But realize that tomorrow is the first day of all the other days between now and the election that we have to make a difference to preserve and protect our Constitution, our democracy, from those who do otherwise. So forgive this uh, interruption in your, your holiday off. Uh, I would like not to have such a sober message, but I think we have spent too much time not discussing this that we can't afford to ignore it now. So all the best from my, uh, my office at home. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Hopefully the weather will be better and I'll be out on the trail. All the best. Bye-bye.